So even though it's been about three years since I made the switch from Canon to Fujifilm, the Fujinon 18 to 55 millimeter 2.8 lens is still one of my all time favorite Fuji lenses. And in today's video, I wanna talk about some of my impressions of why I value this lens so much and how I utilize it and why I think that you would benefit from having one as well. So the first reason that I think this lens is so great is because of its price point. For a brand new price tag of $699 or a used price tag just under $400, I really don't think you can go wrong with all the features that you're going to get included with the lens as well. And really, neither one of those prices are that bad compared to the upgraded version of this lens, which can cost somewhere around the ballpark of $1,200 if you're looking for a new one, or $1,000, maybe if you're lucky, $900 for a renewed version. But the thing that it's crazy about this lens, it's not your average and typical kit lens lens because with most kit lenses you're looking at a lowest aperture of 3.5 or f4 but with this lens you're actually getting f2.8 so now you have a kit lens that can perform well in low light it's going to do great for portraits and a wide variety of other types of photography the thing that's really cool about this lens and actually took me a little bit of getting used to when i switched from canon to fuji was that this lens comes equipped with an aperture ring so you're able to actually turn this ring to quickly dial in your aperture aperture settings, which is a great thing if you're trying to do aperture priority or you just need to make sudden quick changes to capture a particular shot. Now with that, the aperture ring does not actually have the numbers listed on it, but that kind of makes sense because f2.8 only works at your widest open uh, view range of about 18 millimeters. After you kind of start to zoom in, you start to lose that f2.8 and you have to back into like an f4 and different aperture settings that way. And the next thing I want to mention about this lens is it's a max immaculate build quality. Now this isn't like a super high-end build quality by any means, but it's also not your typical build quality of traditional kit lenses, especially like the ones you see from Canon and Nikon. And I'm not trying to diss Canon or Nikon or their build qualities. I've had some of their kit lenses, which are all basically plastic and weigh basically nothing at all, that performed pretty well. But this lens has a little bit of weight to it. It's pretty rugged. I would feel comfortable if I dropped it on certain surfaces, maybe like a carpet or something, not saying that I intentionally want to drop this lens. However, not long after I had my X-T3 and this lens, I did have it sitting on the hood of my car while the car was running. And of course, that rumbles a little bit. And the X-T3 and the lens both actually hit the pavement in a parking lot, and neither one of them got hurt whatsoever. I haven't noticed any loss of quality in the lens or the abilities of the camera not saying that you want to go and drop the thing but had that happened with a cheaper plastic kit lens that doesn't really have this strong of a build quality i'm sure there would have probably been some kind of damages either to the optics or the mechanics within the lens or even the outer uh, shell itself but it's not just the outside that's good but the optics on the inside are really nice as well when I compare to this to some of my favorite kit lenses that I used with Canon, the overall image quality is even better. I noticed that the images are a lot sharper. They just look a lot better from the get-go without having to do any post-editing. I noticed on some of the kit lenses when I was using Canon, the images did come off a little bit softer, which in some cases can be good when you're doing portraits, especially when you want that skin to have a little bit nice of a softer effect. And I know today's video looks a little bit soft, but that's because I'm using a mist filter. It's a look that I'm experimenting with and I just currently like right now. But I have used this lens to make pretty much every video I've done on YouTube for the past three years. So if you're looking to see some of my videos with that really crisp, quick, clear quality, just go check out one of my older videos prior to the past couple of uploads. So with that being said, I use this particular lens for about 90% of the things that I'm creating. I use it for all of my video projects and I use it for probably about 80 to 90% of my photo projects. Sometimes I will switch to a 200 millimeter lens to get some, you know, maybe some portraits or do some far off distance landscapes. I also have a couple of prime lenses I use as well in certain scenarios, mostly because my aperture values on the primes can get lower than an f2.8. So I'll use them maybe if I'm doing street photography, something at nighttime, or I just need that little extra oomph for a portrait. I'll pull those in. But this lens is pretty much my workhorse and does all the work that I currently do. I like it because you get a really good angle of view which is great for portraits, street photography, landscapes, and just about any type of other photo work you want to get involved with. 
Because I am shooting on a crop sensor, the 18 to 55 actually becomes more of an angle of view equivalent to a full frame of about a 29 to a 76 or so, but that's still a very good versatile range for all the things at least that I need to do with this particular lens. The other thing I like about this lens is typically when I am shooting landscapes, I do have to do a lot of hiking to get to the locations that I want to go to to get my shots. So with that being said, I try to pack as lightly as possible and I can not only fit this lens, but also the lens attached to my camera in a little sling bag that I can just throw over my shoulder. So if I'm needing to have both hands to start doing some climbing over some rocks or I get to some water situations and I need to kind of keep my balance a little better, this camera and lens together really pack away, which is great. And they also don't weigh a ton. Now it's not the lightest thing in the world. It does have a little bit of weight to it, but it's not something that's really gonna drag you down on a long or more strenuous hike like a larger lens like my 200 millimeter lens has a lot more weight to it and you know it doesn't pack away like this particular setup does so that causes some issues in those certain scenarios so that's something that's important to you that's just another little bit of icing on the cake that makes this lens so valuable the other thing that's great about this lens it does have optical image stabilization which for me is extra good because i'm shooting on a fuji xt3 that does not have internal ibis so because i don't have that that extra little bit of stabilization built in the camera, it's nice that I do have that image stabilization built into the lens. That way, if I'm shooting handheld, which most of the shots that I do are gonna be handheld, it just makes sure that I have a little bit better of a shot and it's gonna keep everything nice and sharp and in focus and not have really any blur to it. And on top of that, it's a pretty fast lens when you're trying to do autofocus. In fact, the entire time that I've been filming this video, the camera and the lens has all been set into auto mode and continuous. And so as I start to move around, the camera is going to be able to help track me along with the software in the camera body. And it's going to be able to use the lens to be able to do the focusing that it needs to do. And on top of that, it's relatively quiet when it's doing these things. So if you are filming video and for whatever reason you're using the internal audio in your camera, you're not really going to hear these things. Or if you do, it's going to be fairly minute. But I do everything with external recording, rather it's through an off-camera microphone like I have now which is the Rode Studio Mic Pro. Now, I guess if I was trying to pull at least one con out of this lens is that it is not weather sealed. Now that's not a huge deal to me because a lot of the lens that I shot with on Canon and previously to that Nikon, or even a little bit of my time with Sony, none of my lenses there were weather sealed either. So it's just something that I'm accustomed to. So with all that in mind, that's why I think this is one of the best possible lenses you can buy. If you are a Fujifilm shooter, you're looking to go to Fujifilm, or you're just looking to buy another lens to have or your first lens, it really doesn't matter. I think overall, this is one of the best lenses you can have for that price. So if you're on a budget, I think $700 or if you get a renewed version for around $400 is not a bad price tag to pay whatsoever, especially considering you can pay up to $1,500 or $2,000 for some more high quality lenses or even more. And to be able to get the things you can get out of this lens for what you're paying for it, I really think is a valid investment. Now, here's where I'd like to ask you your thoughts. If you currently own this lens, I want to know your thoughts of what you think about this lens. Does it perform well to you? Does it live up to your expectations? And what areas could it be better? And if you're thinking about buying this lens, but you're kind of on the fence, what is the other lens you're looking to buy instead of this one? And why are you thinking about choosing that one? Leave your creative thoughts in the comments section below. Hello, and as always, be sure to create something new today.